Thank you, Mr. President. I want to speak about the uh, health care bill that has been uh, laid out in the House now, introduced in the House of Representatives, and express great concern about the proposal as it relates to the people of Michigan that I represent, as well as people across the country. And frankly, this proposal or whatever passes will be judged based on whether or not people pay more uh, for their coverage if they can find it, uh, whether they're going to be able to get the health care that they need. Health care is very personal. Despite the politics here in Congress and in the White House, health care is not political. Uh, it's very personal. Can you go to a doctor? Can you take your child to a doctor? Can your parents get the nursing home care that they need, or your grandparents? Are you going to be able to find insurance after you've had a heart attack or cancer, or if your child has juvenile diabetes and therefore has a pre-existing condition? I am deeply concerned about the initial look I've had, and we, we will continue to look at more and more at the details as they come out, but frankly, this proposal is going to create chaos in the healthcare system. And frankly, I would say this is a mess. It's going to create a big mess as it relates to the families that I represent and that we all represent in our home states. This was written in secret. We've all seen the stories of a, a senator from uh, the other side of the aisle that was running around trying to, with his copier trying to get a copy of what was going on and everything was done in, in secret and now that it's out we find out there's no cost attached to it. We don't know what the overall cost will be to taxpayers. Uh, we also don't know how many people are going to be able to get health care. Who's going to be able to be covered? Uh, but what I have seen really falls in the category of creating a mess for families. Higher costs for middle class families, higher costs for poor families, but less coverage. Such a deal. This is not the kind of deal that the people of Michigan want to have for themselves and their families. And add insult to injury, it cuts taxes for the wealthiest Americans while making most Americans pay more. It makes seniors pay more, and we have heard people calling it uh, the age tax or the senior tax, but the reality is in a number of different ways, how we rate based on age and other costs, seniors will pay more. And then it's my understanding that in the middle of this, there's actually a sweetheart deal for CEOs of big insurance companies that would give them a pay raise. So this whole thing is stunning to me that it's being put forward with a straight face. And then on top of everything else, it removes the guarantee for pre-existing conditions so that it's very unclear what will happen to someone who's had a heart attack or uh, throughout their life. I, I have a new little uh, baby uh, grandniece who's had uh, two heart surgeries already and it has another one that she will have to have in another year and while she's doing great and uh, my niece and nephew deserve incredible uh, uh, admiration for uh, taking care of little Leighton. She's going to have a pre-existing condition, Mr. President, her whole life. She's going to have a, a reconstructed heart. Uh, that is going to cause her uh, various challenges. And uh, without the current guarantees that we have that she can't be blocked from getting insurance, her folks are going to have a hard time. And little Leighton's going to have a hard time her whole life. So when we look a little bit more on the details in all of this, we see, in fact, that this bill provides tax increases for millions of families. It repeals the tax credits in 2020 that help working families be able to afford insurance. And by the way, even though things don't happen immediately, 
the insurance companies knowing it's coming are certainly going to find themselves making different kinds of decisions, and certainly families will make different kinds of decisions, and I would expect the insurance system to be destabilized immediately. We are already seeing problems with insurance companies pulling out just based on the debate about repealing health care. But when we look at the tax credit or help for buying health care, it goes from helping those who are uh, low, moderate, middle income families be able to afford insurance to changing the whole thing so it's based on your age and your income. So the higher the age, the higher the income, the more taxpayer dollars you get, which makes no sense. So a 55-year-old with higher income will get more taxpayer funding than a 30-year-old working a minimum wage job who's got the toughest time trying to find insurance that they can afford. This is not the set of values or certain perspectives uh, that I think make sense for people in Michigan as well as people across the country. And then while that 30-year-old working a minimum wage job is going to be paying more and, and hope, hoping that they don't have a pre-existing condition because they may not be able to find insurance at all, then we see that there's a 300 billion, with a B, billion dollar tax cut for the wealthiest Americans. So picture this, somebody on a minimum wage job who could very well see their health insurance go completely away will have that happen while someone making more than $3.7 million a year would save over $200,000 a year. So $200,000 a year is what they would get back now in the form of a tax cut, more than what most people make. Certainly, the majority of people in Michigan make less, and they work very, very hard but make less than that $200,000. And to just to underscore, this is the first bill out of the gate here that we're talking about any kind of tax cuts in. So we're already seeing Republicans cutting taxes for the wealthy while raising taxes on the middle class and raising their health care costs, if they can find health care. And these tax cuts are just the start. Wait until we get to tax reform where we're going to see this whole debate happen again, where my guess is middle-income people are going to end up being, uh, paying the bill, paying more, and wealthy people are going to get another round of tax cuts. <coughs> and to add insult to injury again, in here a sweetheart deal so CEOs of the big insurance companies can get a pay, uh, pay raise, get more money, while people are paying more if they're working or poor or middle class. And there are tax cuts for prescription drug companies of $30 billion, but the bill does nothing to lower the cost of prescription drugs. So this certainly is not health care for the majority of Americans. This certainly is not health care for those who need to have access to affordable health care. And then back to our seniors, who will pay more because of the changes in how health care costs will be rated. And we will essentially see older people having twice the tax credit, but five times more cost. And I'm not sure exactly how it's being proposed on pre-existing conditions. We're still working through that. But I do know that the bill has a penalty. Uh, if you have health insurance and for some reason, the crisis in your family, for some reason, you can't continue it, you drop that insurance and then you re-enroll again, there's a 30% late enrollment surcharge. So you'd be paying 30% more, more for your health insurance if you have a pre-existing condition. 
And then just two other items, Mr. President, that are very important. And that is, and I know the distinguished presiding officer shares um, concern about this as well, and that is the fact that we've been able to create more access to health care by expanding Medicaid, which is critically important. One of the great success stories uh, in Michigan today is that 97% of our children in Michigan can now see a doctor. 97%. We don't want to go backwards. Every child should have the ability to see a doctor. Every mom, every dad, every grandpa, every grandma. And right now in Michigan, 97% of children can see a doctor because of the work that we did on the Affordable Care Act, including expanding Medicaid. So this goes away. It takes a couple of years, but that goes away. And instead, what's proposed essentially is a voucher. Uh, you can call it a lot of names. It used to be folks talking about a block grant to the states. Now they call it per capita. But it's real simple. Just like there's been proposals by Republicans for years to have a voucher for Medicare, now this is essentially a voucher for Medicaid. X amount of dollars, if you need more for your nursing home care, then you're on your own. X amount of dollars for your child, for a family. If you have something happen where you get sick, you need surgery, you have cancer, and it goes above that voucher, you're on your own. So it completely changes Medicaid from an insurance system to a system where there is essentially a voucher. And millions and millions and millions of children of families, of seniors, where the majority of seniors in nursing homes get their coverage through Medicaid. Our moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas right now who get quality nursing home care because of Medicaid will be severely impacted by this voucher that caps how much care that they will be able to receive. And then finally, for over half the population, those of us who are women, we will see a return essentially to being a woman being a pre-existing condition because essential services for women, maternity care, which I was at the front of the line fighting for, prenatal care, maternity care, which is not available in the majority of private plans that a woman tries to buy without paying more you can get maternity care, but it's not viewed as basic. It may be basic to you as a woman, but insurance companies say, sure, we'll cover maternity care, but you have to pay more. So women forever have been paying more for our basic health care. And under the Affordable Care Act, that changed, where we said, you know what, as a woman, you shouldn't have to pay more for the basic care that you need. And now all that goes away under the House proposal. And just to make sure that we see women's health care taken away, Planned Parenthood, which provides not 97% of what they do is basic care, mammograms, get to go see your doctor, OBGYN, prenatal care, uh, all of the things that you need for annual visits and so on, that is defunded. That is completely defunded. I want to congratulate everyone who's been involved in the effort to make sure that birth control is affordable for women. Under the Affordable Care Act, we've done that. This is an economic issue. This is not a frill for women or for men, for families. And those who have worked hard to make sure that we can lower unintended pregnancies in this country, well, the good news is that we are at a 30-year low of unintended pregnancies, a historic low in teen pregnancies, and at the lowest rate of abortions since 1973. 1973. And why is that? That's because women have been able to get the health care that they need. They've been able to get affordable birth control to be able to manage their health care 
as well as seeing the economy improve. But we are seeing more and more where information being available, costs for basic preventative care being down, women having access to what they need on health care allows them to be in a situation where we are seeing these historic, historic lows on unintended pregnancies, teen pregnancies, and abortions. I know in Michigan that we have many counties, we have a number of counties across Michigan, particularly in rural communities, where the Planned Parenthood Clinic is the only provider of basic health care. It's the only provider for family planning and for cancer screenings and basic health care for women and for many men. It may be the only provider uh, in the community. More than half of Planned Parenthood health centers are in rural and underserved communities. And about one third of all the women where Planned Parenthood is, it, living in those communities where Planned Parenthood is available, find that this is the only health care provider available to them. So support for women, preventative health care, Planned Parenthood funding, cut completely in this bill. Access to maternity care, prenatal care, other basic essential services eliminated. You want that? You can pay more as a woman. And on top of that, we are seeing essential services like mental health, substance abuse services, other basic comprehensive services that we've said for the last several years should be available, healthcare above the neck as well as healthcare below the neck, should be viewed as essential services for people across America. All of that goes away with this proposal. So Mr. President, in my judgment, this is a, mu a mess. It's gonna create a mess. More costs, less service, shifting taxpayer dollars to the wealthy while asking the middle class and low-income families to pay more. This is just simply not a good deal. I would welcome the opportunity to work with colleagues on something that made sense. Let's put aside this whole effort of repeal. Let's focus on how we bring costs down, including prescription drugs, and continue to move forward. But let's not go back. When 97% of the children in my state can see a doctor today, that is worth keeping. That represents the best of our values. We can't go backwards. And the proposal that we're seeing in the House would take us back to a place that would hurt the majority of Americans. And I strongly oppose it. Thank you, Mr. President.